Hey guys, gonna do a little rainbow trout ice fishing today, but I'm gonna do something a little bit different. If you notice behind me, there's a bunch of signs pinned on this tree, and there's a lake behind me back here. And that's because this is a selective gear rules lake. Now, it used to be in Eastern Washington that we had split seasons on a lot of our smaller trout lakes up in the mountains. Um, so a split season was basically during the summertime when there's a lot more fishing pressure. Uh, they basically only allowed you to uh, keep two fish. You couldn't use bait. You can you have to use barbless hooks, that kind of thing. And then during the winter, they would open it up to a, a more generous five fish limit, and you can use bait and barbed hooks and all that stuff. And part of that was because uh, there's just reduced pressure. But additionally, um, a lot of these smaller lakes winter kill. But recently, because of rules simplifications they've decided to do away the split season and that means we can only use barbless no bait hooks um, in these smaller lakes there's only a two fish limit which makes getting some of these rainbows to commit to the bite through the ice even more challenging so today i thought i'd go over some of the strategies that i use on these selective gear rules lakes to catch rainbow trout through the ice let's head out there there's fish There we go, got him. Damn it. There we go, pretty little rainbow. Nice. Came right off as he come up. Barbell hooks. Yeah. Pretty little rainbow. That's good. Feels like a decent one. Nice. Just hitting that plain old tungsten scud fly. Ooh, that's a pretty rainbow. Nice. There we go. That's a quality fish. Look at that. Look at that fish there. Beautiful. Chunky rainbow. Nice. He's got a little scud fly right there. Oops. Tungsten. Barbless. Should pop right out. There it goes. Nice. Let's get this guy back in the water. There it goes. Oh, there's fish. He's coming in on it. There was a bite, I missed it. Two fish, got them. Ooh, that feels like a good one. So when I'm fishing in these selective gear rules lakes, I kind of use two different styles of baits. One is uh, what I'm gonna borrow from fly fishermen. This feels like a good fish. One is basically matching the hatch. So I'm gonna look for lures that, or even I'll even use flies, tungsten flies that look like their natural prey. The other ones that I'm going to use, ooh, that's a nice bait. The other style of baits I'm going to use is going to be what I call stimulators, which is another term I'm borrowing from fly fishermen. That's a nice fish. Look at that. Beautiful. So stimulators are going to be those brightly colored, flashy lures that really get the attention of the fish, but don't necessarily mimic anything that they naturally eat. Man, that's a really, really beautiful rainbow. There's a fish right there. Let's see if I can get his attention. Yes, I got his attention. Come on, baby. You can eat it. <laughs> Did not eat it. See if I can get him to come back. Yep. No. Did not want that time. Looking at it. No. Deciding against it. That is very often the case with uh, 
no bait because they're gonna mouth it that first time they don't taste what tastes like food oftentimes you're not gonna get a second hit so that is the disadvantage of not having bait is you've really got to make that first bite count so you got to make sure you have a sensitive enough rod to detect the bite generally trout hit a lot more enthusiastically than your panfish do but even then um, because I'm catching these fish anywhere from 20 feet or even deeper um, a spring bobber really does help me detect that bite especially because I'm having I'm watching on the pan optics these fish are coming up from beneath it and hitting it and sort of lifting it up so I can detect that initial lift on the spring bobbers as, as the spring bobber comes up and I can set the hook oh here he comes got him Good fish. Yeah. So one of the things that I like to start with is these match the hatch type lures. And a lot of times I'm going to use, um, I'll use flies and I'll use especially tungsten flies like scuds and little stone fly patterns. Ooh, that's a beautiful fish. Oh, spectacular. Look at that thing, that is gorgeous. Wow, that is a beautiful rainbow. And I'll get much more perfect than that. Look at the spotting on that and that tail. Spectacular. Man, that's a pretty fish. Ooh, strong fish. So as I was saying, um, I like those flies because they're meant to mimic the prey base that they're feeding on in these lakes so you know the, the leech patterns and scud patterns stonefly patterns I have a scud over there on the dead stick that already caught a fish this morning but I really am excited by all the new plastics out on the market you have to be careful because you can't use plastics that are infused with any kind of scent or salt in Washington State um, but I found some really nice plastics when I was back out east at some of the other ice fishing shops that imitate a variety of small um, aquatic nymph, nymphal stages of larval stages of insects. And they work extremely well. And that's what I've been using today is actually a little tiny purple and pink tungsten jig tipped with one of those little plastics. Um, a lot of those will imitate blood worms or scuds or freshwater shrimp um, and they do extremely well. They have small little appendages, appendages that when jigged underwater look really good. Alright now let's switch up to some gear that's more on that stimulator side of the equation and uh, let's see how the fish respond to that today. Some days they really want that match the hatch kind of uh, tackle and then other days they want that stimulator and other days they want something in between. You can combine these. You can have um, a brightly colored plastic that imitates a scud. Maybe it's an unnatural color like bright chartreuse or something um, but they see that profile and then that color stimulates interest in it and they see that profile and they get close and they go ahead and commit to the bite. So don't think of this as a you know one versus the other. There can be a gradient in between. Fish, got it. Well, I guess that answers the question that they like that ch chartreuse. Look at that. That was like instantaneous. There you go. All this is is a little chartreuse jig with a little chartreuse grub on the back of it from Taylor Tackle. The plastics are. Looks really good in the water. Yeah, that was instantaneous. As soon as I dropped it in, I had fish on. All right, we're gonna move away from this scud pattern and go to a very bright blob. This is a fly with a bead on the front of it. Bright colors, it's basically the power bait of the fly fishing world. Uh, I got a barbless hook on there. I'm gonna put that on there with a little bit of lead to see if they respond to that bright color. Oh yeah. 
There we go. Pretty little rainbow. Pretty rainbow. Look at that. Gorgeous. Woohoo! That's the nature. Nice. So my favorite stimulator patterns are going to be, Ooh, that's a pretty rainbow, these brightly colored jigs. I like tungsten because it falls a little faster, but this is a lead jig and it's doing the job just fine. And you see I've got a little marabou jig there, some plastics on it, and the uh, hammered that thing. Pretty little rainbow. Um, so yeah, I really like those brightly colored jig heads with plastics. Tungsten falls faster, but it's not necessarily needed. Um, I just think that faster fall rate gets them to react and strike a lot more. Some other stimulator patterns that I really like to use include uh, spoons, which work sometimes. Um, they have to be particularly aggressive for those to work. And then um, there's also, uh, you can jig little jigging um, wraps. Those are harder to run a single hook on, especially in those selective gear rules lakes, but the a lot of the guys swear by the Euro Tackle Z-Vibers, which have a single hook and also come in some bright colors. I personally have never had any luck with them, but a lot of people swear by them. Uh, so those are my favorite ones. Nine times out of ten, I'm just going to run um, a small jig with a brightly colored plastic on there and that seems to do the job. Okay, I thought I'd take a second here just to kind of go over this gradient that I was talking about today from your match the hatch type patterns and lures all the way up to your stimulator patterns. So, you know, some of my favorite match the hatch for these inland northwest lakes are going to be scuds, which are very common. These ones have a tungsten back, so they fall really fast. You can jig them or use them on a dead stick. Balance leeches, which can come both in tungsten or brass heads. Some of them are even tied on jig hooks, which is really nice. Here's that uh, Euro Tackle Z Viber, which I talked about. I've had very little luck with this. This is more of a natural pattern one, but they have bright patterns. But the nice thing is it does have a single hook. And then, like I said, you can use these tungsten jig heads. You can use natural colored ones, or you can combine bright colored ones with natural pattern plastics here. Like this one has a little tiny buggy looking black plastic here. Um, but those plastics can also be bright orange. I tried small cast master spoons today. Didn't have much luck, had nibbles, but no takes. But I've done very well on the chartreuse jigs here with some chartreuse plastics, unscented. And these blobs have just been phenomenal on the dead stick rod. These are going to not be in your traditional tackle stores. You're going to have to go to fly shops and find these weighted blobs. Um, I'll see if I can find some online for you and put links to these products below. Oh, there's fish. There it is. Got it. I like that chartreuse. Oh, my pretty little rainbow. Nice. Oop. Off again. Come here, buddy. All right. Well, I think that's going to be my last rainbow for the day. I probably caught well over a dozen here today. I caught them both the sort of match the hatch type patterns, more natural looking patterns. And I've also caught quite a number of them on these more vibrant stimulator colors on both blob flies, on my dead stick rod, and on this little chartreuse jig. All right, so I'm gonna put this one back and call it a day. Hope you guys get out there and enjoy some time on the ice this winter. Even if you only have selective gear rule lakes near you, um, you can still take advantage of that opportunity if you just take 
some of the advice that I gave you today. Alrighty, see you later guys, have a good one.